some in the church say we're at the dusk of faith. The Pope has made it his mission to revive Catholicism throughout Europe. But while the church is worried, no such concerns exist here. In Lourdes, belief is booming. It's the anniversary of the event that put Lourdes on the map. Incredibly, eight million pilgrims are expected this year. This is the grotto where the Virgin Mary is said to have appeared. Now it's a shrine where the sick and the dying are especially welcomed. For some, it's an extremely emotional experience. In the town of Lourdes, you won't find skeptics because pilgrims mean big business. Beyond the religious sanctuary, it's a Catholic Disneyland where blatant commercialism thrives. Pilgrims outnumber locals by five to one. But tourism isn't the draw. The faithful believe Lourdes is filled with a deeply spiritual force. The power to cure body and soul. What did you come here for? A miraculous cure. I've got three children who are two with cystic fibrosis and I've got him with Down syndrome. Tom Doherty has been here more than 20 times. His son Johnny is five and suffers debilitating complications. The cure is in the water and in the well. Not in loads, but in the water and in the well. You're convinced of that? Oh yeah. Not 100, 110%. Fully convinced. Some believe the spring water is sacred. Others say prayers to the Virgin Mary can bring about a miracle cure. I was diagnosed with cancer in my throat and um, I, I was healed. And my miraculous medal fell down that morning and when they, they took the tumour out there was no cancer. I mean, those are just testimonies of what Our Lady has been doing for me. Lots of people come looking for you know, a miracle for, pretend not for themselves as such, but for other people. You know, Father Martin Moran is a chaplain at Lourdes. And even the sick would do that he explains well. how 150 years ago, a local country girl who later became Saint Bernadette saw a series of apparitions while collecting firewood in a grotto. Bernadette I heard a rustle of a wind and she felt something and she looked up and in the niche of the rock behind us here she saw this figure of a woman dressed in white with a blue sash. The woman told her I am the Immaculate Conception. The church is extremely slow uh, to verify something like that because people, uh, you know, in this day and age with people seeing the face of Jesus on toast and pizzas and everything. So things like that have to be really, really verified and she would have gone through quite a lot of uh, scrutiny uh, in order to, uh, you know, to have that verified because both the church and the civil authorities were very sceptical uh, of, of uh, what she claimed to have seen. <laughs> For more than a century, pilgrims, particularly the sick, have flocked to Lourdes to venerate Mary, the mother of Jesus. Many are convinced their prayers to the Virgin have been answered. 
every time that I return to, to Lourdes, I feel I'm walking in the footsteps of that little insignificant girl. And it makes me feel how insignificant I am. And it makes me feel, wow, this is magic. In the 1980s, doctors pronounced Irishman Padda Clark incurable. His body and mind were riddled with multiple sclerosis and he was given just four years to live. Brought to Lourdes as a very sick man, one night in June 1989, he says something incredible happened. The Virgin Mary appeared at the foot of a tiny crucifix in his hotel room. Our Lady just smiled, kept on smiling at me. I remember I was smiling back and I, at the same time that I, was, that I was smiling, there was tears rolling down my face. But it was when my hands were out that I realised my hands are out and they're not shaking. And I realised I'm standing. No one was helping me to stand. Do you believe that a miracle occurred? Yes. Undoubtedly. Absolutely, I've no doubt whatsoever. Uh, till the day I die, on my deathbed, I'll be saying the exact same thing. Four years ago, a wheelchair-bound woman from the north of France came here on her sixth pilgrimage. Si, je peux marcher, je peux me mettre debout, je peux... Nadine is a devout Catholic who doesn't want her last name used. Over time, the muscles in her legs and back rapidly lost strength, so that by her late 40s, she could barely walk. Voilà. This is the first time she's revealed to any media her life-changing experience. She says she was cured during prayers just days after the pilgrimage. Très calmement, a très grand calme à l'intérieur de moi, et je n'ai rien ressenti de particulier. Uh, simplement une grande paix à l'intérieur de moi, un grand calme et un grand bonheur. Nadine and Padda Clark are just two of thousands of devotees convinced they've been cured through their connection to Lord. Well, il y a 100 ans. Donc là, euh, faut que je le pose parce qu'il est tellement fragile que Nadine's case is under investigation by the Lord Medical Bureau, headed by Dr. Patrick Tellier. The bureau has more than 7,000 claims in its archives. These particular records are from 1908. Dr. Tellier says claims of miracle cures were far more prevalent a hundred years ago than they are today. Les gens qui guérissent ne se déclarent plus. Ils ont peur, soit de paraître euh, illuminés, donc ça c'est une raison religieuse, disons, soit d'être obligés de faire des examens complémentaires et supplémentaires, ils n'ont pas envie, donc ça c'est une raison médicale. Seven miracles, most of them involving nuns, have been validated by the Catholic Church. One of the most recent was Jean-Pierre Belly, who was declared cured of multiple sclerosis after visiting Lourdes in 1987. He died last year. You said, Happy are the, poor. the Church insists on a rigorous investigation of miraculous cures, which must be both immediate and permanent. Even among Catholics, the process has its critics. I'm a skeptic about physical miracle cures. I don't think God is a conjuring artist. And I think there's always been within Catholicism, within religion, this kind of, this other tendency to try and find proof. 
And it's partly to do with the kind of scientific enlightenment and the idea that we can't believe anything unless we can prove it. So this idea has taken hold and the church has bought into it now. Dr. Tellier is a devout Catholic and a respected physician. Every day he opens letters from around the world, many detailing miracles, both great and small. Je me permets de vous écrire pour confirmer que j'ai été témoin de la guérison miraculeuse d'une jeune femme en 1961. He denies Lourdes encourages pilgrims to hope for a miraculous cure. Non. Du tout, elle n'a jamais été une usine de miracles. Hein. Euh, non, non, non. En aucune façon. Hein. Elle n'a elle elle a pas cherché le miracle. Ils sont arrivés, euh, bon, euh, on, on les a reçus. Euh, on a tout fait d'ailleurs pour euh, limiter et pour ne prendre que les choses sûres et certaines. Mais on n'en a pas fait une industrie. Euh. After his cure, Irishman Padda Clark and his wife had two children and life was good. We, we did indeed. What, what but now he's developed like chronic arthritis and can barely walk. It, it's so severe. It, it, it's, it, it's hard to take. But at the same time, you just say, uh -uh. you're all the time reminded of the way you were. And the way I was, I was an excuse of a human being. And now I have a life. Ah, the, the little lady. Padda Clark eventually pulled out of the validation process because he disliked the celebrity status that went with it. As the years went on, it was becoming more, more of a, what would I say, a circus nearly. Um, and I didn't want it. I just didn't want it. So some people actually treated you as if you could perhaps fast track them to a miracle? Absolutely. Like I, I, I would find like, and I don't, I don't mean it in badness towards anyone, but they'd be touching you and, you know, when oh, I have to rub off you and, you know, it wasn't me. I felt that, say, regarding myself, people were, were coming with me to be with the miracle man. You were called the miracle man? Yeah, you know, and I didn't like that. I, I, I like being just, being part, being part of a group, just being an ordinary Joe Soap, hidden in the corner. Leave me, leave me there, let me do my own thing. Millions of others come in search of a life-changing event, just like the one that changed Padda Clark's life. It's the force that keeps them coming. <laughs>